Here. Sidney Carlton. Here. Michelle Dressler. Here. Ken Fox. Here. Ryan McCarthy. Here. Linda Maricall. Here. Kathleen Pishney. Here. Stephanie Price. Here. Dr. Ellen Tuthill. Present. And Dean Velasco. I am here as well. We have a full committee. We do. Excellent. Let's move on to the agenda. Did everyone get a chance to uh, look at the agenda for this evening? Move to approve. We have a first. Second. And we have a second. Let's uh, take a call for votes. Okie dokie. Dean Velasco. Yes. Dr. Ellen Tuthill. Yes. Stephanie Price. Yes. Kathleen Pishney. Uh, yes. Linda Maricall. Yes. Ryan McCarthy. Yes. Dean, uh, sorry, Ken Fox. Yes. yes. <laughs> Michelle Dressler. Yes. Cindy Carlton. Yes. Dan Bickford. Yes. Anita Batista. Yes. Looks like we have a unanimous, unanimous vote for approving the agenda. Let's move on to item number three, approval of the minutes. Have you all had a chance to look through the minutes? Move to approve. We have a first and a second to approve the meeting minutes for January 5th. Let's call for a uh, vote. Linda Merrill, call. Linda? Yes. Okay, great. Kathleen Pishney? Aye. Stephanie Price? Yes. Dr. Ellen Tuthill? Aye. <clears throat> Dean Valesco? Aye. Anita Batista? Aye. Dan Pickford? Aye. Snooty Carlton? Aye. Michelle Dressler? Aye. Ken Fox? Aye. Ryan McCarthy? Uh, unanimous approval. Excellent. Okay, let's move on to item number four. We would like to introduce a new member of the Santee Parks and Rec Committee, Mr. Ryan McCarthy. Welcome. Hello. Yeah, let's uh, <laughs> tell, us, tell us a little bit about yourself and why you're interested in uh, Santee Parks and Rec and some, some of that good stuff. Well, I... Uh, have always felt like uh, civic duty was an important part of my life. So starting in high school and all the way through um, current day, I've always tried to be a part of whatever community I'm living in. Um, my family, I moved the, my wife and I moved to Santee in 2020 to start our family. And we just absolutely love the city and we moved here on purpose and we wanted to be here. And that's why we ended up here. Um, We've fallen in love with the city more now that we have been here for a few years. And um, one of the things that I like most is how beautiful all the parks are and how well the city's taken care of. So <clears throat> I felt like if I could be a, a contributor to any of that, then I felt like that was part of my responsibility. Um, previously, I was the HOA president of my homeowners association in Claremont, San Diego for 16 years. It's a thankless position, like a lot of us know. But uh you know, you do what you can and you try to make the area that you live around better and uh, everyone can kind of enjoy it some more that way. So um, I'm excited to, to volunteer in as many ways that I can and, and help this committee um, as best I can. And hopefully for the first year or two, I can just learn and, and follow the lead of you guys and see uh, where I can be best uh, put any, any services to use. Awesome. What's awesome. your favorite park, Ryan? Um, you know, Mass Park is where we go a lot. Like, we spend a lot of time there, and, and we love it. And, um, you know, it's so close to the house. And the dog parks are great. And, like, we really – it's just, you know, everywhere that we go around here just seems like it's well-kept and everything. So I'm still trying to learn um, which which ones are rec maintained by us and which ones aren't, you know. But uh, uh, Mass Park is the favorite so far. Awesome. Anyone else have any questions or want to say anything? Okay, well, welcome. There will be plenty of uh, um, spaces to, uh, places to volunteer throughout the year, so okay. we look forward to seeing you out there at, at all of our cool events, and you get to hear about them first here. Being you know, so, Oh, good. Awesome. Excellent. Let's go on to number five, uh, Santee Twilight Brews and Bites Report and Special Event Fundraising Request. Uh, Becky's here. She's going to come up. Uh, Becky. Where oh. is she? Becky. She Becky, where are you? Came from. There you go. Becky Lowndes, our special events supervisor. Good Hi, evening. everybody. Good evening. 
Am I on? Okay. Perfect. So I'm doing a recap of the 2022 Twilight Brews and Bites event. So in 2022, we had a total of 1,231 tickets that were sold. Of those, 31 were our designated driver tickets, which does come at a reduced rate. We do want to offer some incentive for people to stay sober and drive everybody home. We sold seven VIP tables, and out of all of the vendors, we had 47 total. 16 provided alcohol, two were non-alcoholic, 23 were food, and six were business booths, which represent non-restaurant um, industry, such as the fire department providing pizza, the Santee Community Foundation provided food, and additional non-restaurant sponsors that provided either some sort of beverage or food. Overall attendance, we had 1,096 ticket holders attend, which is an 89% attendance rate. Um, some of the contributing factors we thought for the not 100% attendance is that our lovely Padres were in the playoff, and then also we did have some poor weather. It was forecasted, and we did experience it towards the end as well. So out of the, um, excuse me, we had 190 complimentary tickets that were provided to our sponsors, donors, and vendors, and volunteers. So a grand total of 1,288 people were attended the event. This is a fundraiser, so we did have fundraising opportunity during the event um, in two different avenues. We had an opportunity drawing and a silent auction. Each had uh, bundled packages, 16 each. Grand total, we raised $5,568.03. It is kind of an odd number because we do have uh, bank processing fees from Square where we do our credit card processing and they take a portion of the, the revenue. This is a little less than what we've received in the past for our, our fundraising efforts, just due to the challenges that we had soliciting the donations after COVID-19 pandemic. So going on to the financial report, we had a gross event revenue of $88,166.77. Our total expenditures year-to-date is $59,456.88, which brings us to a net revenue of $28,709.89. I say year-to-date because the REC revolving is continuously revolving. We do take a portion of staff um, hours that are going towards the Bruise and Bites event come out of this pot, so it will never remain constant. We're still prepping for this upcoming year, so this number is ever-changing. So this report is uh, as of yes, excuse me, yesterday, February 1st. So here's a, a chart that shows the revenue that we made for the event going back to 2017. You can see from 2017, 18, and 19, we are averaging a little over $49,000. As we know, in 2020, we had to cancel the event. In 2021, we offered a small condensed event, which was only 500 people. Um, we did not make any revenue on that. We actually had ARPA money had to supplement over $10,000 so that we could break even. So this is our, tr our truly first event that we had post-COVID. So we're looking at 28,710 as our net revenue. So you can see that right there. We have a breakdown here of the attendance and the vendors that we had on site. The far right column shows the ratio of people to vendors. The reason that we like to showcase this is to, to provide you with an example of how many people um, we allow into the event per vendor just to keep the great quality of the event. We want to have an event enhancement of lower lines. We don't want people to be waiting in line forever at each booth. Just um, does not provide for a high quality event. So we're looking at trying to keep the ratio between 23 and 25 as in the past. But as you can see on the bottom row, the event 2022, we only had...
Reserving a picnic shelter in Santee is now easier than ever. It can all be done online. Follow along as we walk you through the step-by-step -step process for reserving your next picnic shelter rental. Step one, open up a new internet browser and pull up the City of Santee's website, which can be found at www.cityofsanteeca.gov. Step two, scroll down the page a little bit and select the green button labeled Reserve a Picnic Shelter. A new window tab will open with the Picnic Shelter Reservation page. Step three, sign in or create an account now at the top right corner of the page. Then click on the Reservation tab on the top menu bar. Step 4. Start off by browsing the parks. Select the park option you would like to reserve. Note: Park choices include picnic shelter location and additional spaces for a bounce house or other approved vendors. Now select the date and time slot. Click Apply. You can see if this space is available or not under the date you selected. If you'd like the full day, click on Add New Date and Time and select the same date in the other time slot for that day. Now list the number of attendees and click Proceed. Step 5. Please fill in the event details. Read and initial the waiver at the bottom of the page then click Reserve. Step 6. Please read and check the waiver box and then proceed with the checkout process to confirm your reservation. Hi, I'm Jesse Forney with the Santee Fire Department. Fire season is upon us. Santee Fire has already responded to multiple brush fires this season. Living in Santee is beautiful and scenic. However, with that beauty comes danger. Having a good defensible space is important to protect yourself and us during fire season. To get a good defensible space, you need two zones. Zone one is 30 feet from your house, getting all tree shrubs, branches away from your chimneys and along the side of your house. Zone two is the 30 to 100 feet range, having that good defensible space behind you. Behind me is a good example of what a defensible space around your house should look like. Oxide, also known as invisible killer, is colorless and odorless. It's caused by unburned fuels that come from small engines and household appliances such as your stove. Having the appropriate detector in your house could save your life. Hi sir, thanks hey, for coming out today. Yeah, no problem, what can we do for you? You know, it sounds like I'm having a problem with my carbon monoxide alarm here. It keeps going off every minute or so. Okay, uh, when it does go off, just like that, yeah. that indicates that you probably have some bad batteries, so you want to go ahead and replace those batteries. Okay. Another thing that be get, could be happening is that the sensor could be bad and you just need to buy a whole new carbon monoxide. You'll know when you have an actual alarm when you hear something like this, a continuous beep. 
If you have that continuous beep, what you want to do is go ahead and clear out to fresh air and call 911 and we'll be out to check your situation out. Perfect. All right. Thank you for coming out today. No problem. Have a good day, sir. Take care. Reserving a picnic shelter in Santee is now easier than ever. It can all be done online. Follow along as we walk you through the step-by-step -step process for reserving your next picnic shelter rental. Step 1. Open up a new internet browser and pull up the City of Santee's website, which can be found at www.cityofsanteeca.gov. Step 2. Scroll down the page a little bit and select the green button labeled Reserve a Picnic Shelter. A new window tab will open with the Picnic Shelter Reservation page. Step three, sign in or create an account now at the top right corner of the page. Then click on the Reservation tab on the top menu bar. Step four, start off by browsing the parks. Select the park option you would like to reserve. Note, park choices include picnic shelter location and additional spaces for a bounce house or other approved vendors. Now select the date and time slot. Click apply. You can see if this space is available or not under the date you selected. If you'd like the full day, click on add new date and time and select the same date and the other time slot for that day. Now list the number of attendees and click proceed. Step 5. Please fill in the event details. Read and initial the waiver at the bottom of the page, then click reserve. Step 6. Please read and check the waiver box and then proceed with the checkout process to confirm your reservation. I'm Jesse Forney with the Santee Fire Department. Fire season is upon us. Santee Fire has already responded to multiple brush fires this season. Living in Santee is beautiful and scenic. However, with that beauty comes danger. Having a good defensible space is important to protect yourself and us during fire season. To get a good defensible space, you need two zones. Zone one is 30 feet from your house, getting all tree shrubs, branches away from your chimneys and along the side of your house. Zone two is the 30 to 100 feet range, 
having that good defensible space behind you. Behind me is a good example of what a defensible space around your house should look like. Oxide, also known as invisible killer, is colorless and odorless. It's caused by unburned fuels that come from small engines and household appliances such as your stove. Having the appropriate detector in your house could save your life. Hi sir, thanks hey, for coming out doing? today. Yeah, no problem, what can we do for you? You know, it sounds like I'm having a problem with my carbon monoxide alarm here. It keeps going off every minute or so. Okay, uh, when it does go off, just like that, yeah. that indicates that you probably have some bad batteries, so you want to go ahead and replace those batteries. Okay. Another thing that be get, could be happening is that the center could be bad and you just need to buy a whole new carbon monoxide. You'll know when you have an actual alarm when you hear something like this, a continuous beep. If you have that continuous beep, what you want to do is go ahead and clear out to fresh air and call 911 and we'll be out to check your situation out. Perfect. All right. Thank you for coming out today. No problem. Have a good day, sir. Take care. Oh, uh, let me add um, about the restroom placement. So there was there's the existing restroom, which is like regular um, comfort station, the flush toilets. We also supplement with a couple with porta potties. Now the porta potties were not dropped off in the right location, and it was beyond my control by okay. the time I showed up. <laughs> Usually there is back by the back gate, so you don't yeah. have to drop your drink. There's usually a row of porta pots back there. They got placed down like on the fourth of July, which is over by the restroom. So unfortunately that I wasn't I, we weren't able to relocate them. Um, to, in, to inside the venue. Yeah, because I remember so, 2019, yeah. I didn't feel that way. Yeah. It, but so, this 22 was Yeah, brutal. they were misplaced, unfortunately. And then there is a bank at the beginning of the... Um, uh, event venue, just like where we have for the concerts as well, out front. But I think we could reconsider at least maybe um, placing the ADA um, um, porta pot in a more accessible location. Yeah, that would be nice. Yeah, no problem. All right. Other than that, it was a great event. Everybody enjoyed themselves. Um, it was really, uh, you guys really did a fabulous job for what you had to do in a short time. Thank you. Thanks for the feedback. I appreciate it. Thank you, Linda. Uh, Dan, I'm sorry, Mr. Tuttle. Thirty-five hundred dollars per month <clears throat> to, to, to go into the community enhancement fund. Yes. I move that we allocate that money for these. Okay. Let's uh, <laughs> let's comment and then we'll take a vote and we'll we'll get a second. Do we have a second or do we have? What's the rules on that? Okay, we'll do it now. Uh, I'd, I'll I'll have a second for that. But let's finish off comments, and we'll take a vote on giving them some funds. Okay. Damn. Thank you. Uh, could you go back to the um, event challenges slide? You got it. Um, this $7,500 stipend from Santee Community Foundation, isn't, isn't that us? That's the foundation money. That's There's a... It is a nonprofit that is not city affiliated. Okay. But it is um, does have some individuals who are passionate about parks and supporting city operations. Sounds good. And um, did we have a budget prepared for this event? Oh yeah, um, <laughs> we're required every year to submit an annual budget. Um, we uh, do it during our budgeting process, and it's included in the recreation revolving special funds. You know, could how did we do on that budget? Um, so our um, so we haven't we didn't make all of the revenue we had anticipated, um, 
because we we based it off of one and we were back in the regular year of 2019 when we so we kept that exact budget we had a significant increase in expenses so we duplicated the exact budget that we had recommended in 2019 okay um and let's go to the rec recommendations. Uh, there we go. Um, how many people did we have leave at 8.30? Well, it started raining. <laughs> oh, people, everybody <laughs> well, left. If they were smart, they left, but I was still there. Uh, I was there, too, trying to put away TVs that were getting rained on. Yeah. Okay, great. Yeah, because I didn't make it. I uh, I was having problems with my hip that, that night. Um, and... Uh, the, uh, so we don't really know that decreasing an hour would help in 23. So the reason we're proposing to decrease an hour is we're also really hoping to incentivize additional vendors to come on site. Um, we did some market research for other similar events that are happening in San Diego County, and they're offering three-hour tastings um, that usually will have beer and wine or seltzer and no food for sale. So for example, we have an event coming up in March at the waterfront, it's three hours for $40 plus a service fee, um, and then hard alcohol and food are sold separately. We have another event in January at NTC, which is $50 for three hours with a service fee, food and uh, food is sold separately. Um, in North Park, there's a, an event for three hours, it's $40 plus a service fee and food is sold separately. So we're um, just kind of in line with what, what else is happening. Um, and we're just trying to, like I said, incentivize as many vendors to come on site. So if we can be in line with what other organizations are doing, maybe they'll like to participate as well. Okay, thank you. Um, thank you for doing that research. Um, we're going to drop an hour and increase the price. Um, <clears throat> but from what you said, the other uh, other places, food and and food is not yeah food is not sold, typically uh, included in, in most of these sold um, separately events. so Correct. no i think i think we're good there i'm okay with charging as much as we can uh without having to uh, without having a, a a loss of attendance and that that's my concern is uh loss of attendance um what else did i have here Nope, that's it. Okay. Thank, Thank you, you Dan. Thank, Thank you, Dan. Yes, sir. Mr. Fox. Are there items that we rent every year that we could possibly buy for the store? We uh, go. Yeah, sorry. <clears throat> Poor Becky, like, came two weeks before the event. So um, we always look at those types of things, like generators are always seems to be a hot item that we we would use that $3,500 towards those or something. But we did decide many years ago when this um, event got so much larger that we did, um, we do a lot of rentals um, for like the can canopies because they set them up and they break them down for us. And that is a lot of man hours. So um, there are maybe a few things. We think also that we might be able to find a band that could do um, almost a straight show for three hours. Some don't usually go last for four hours and they have to take a, a break in between and it's an additional expense. But we're always looking to see if there's something we can purchase and possibly even utilize not beyond just this event. So, um, you know, our iPad rentals, we always feel like we need more of those, those types of things. Yeah. And radios. Radios are always critical. Is, is that it, Mr. Fox? Yes. All right. Michelle. Um, I just wanted to say that as far as increasing the ticket price goes, I think that's like a great idea because I do think the demographics wise people are willing to have an increase in the initial ticket price for the convenience of not having to pull out their credit card and pay for food separately. So um, I think that's a good idea. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else have a uh, Stephanie? Miss Steph. Yes, I, I didn't realize it was being cut in time. I think four hours is for a Saturday night and the kid free. I think a lot of adults, I'm, well, not me, but, uh, the, the adults look forward to that. And so um, 
I can see raising the price, but I think four hours would be with all you're putting into it to at least utilize the four hour walk or hike. Okay. Thank you. Any other comments? A few, a few closing comments, if I may. Uh, thank you, Becky, for putting this presentation together. And thank you, Anne, for providing institutional knowledge that uh, Becky or myself wouldn't be able to answer. At the end of the day, this is a phenomenal event. Just like many cities across the United States, you know, there's communities that have a fall festival, there's communities that have winter festivals. We have a phenomenal Brews and Bites event. And this is such a popular event. It brings in a lot of revenue for the city. However, I see your point, Stan, but we also saw an 8.2 CPI index increase. So those are the things we have to be mindful, and those are the things that we're considering where we're considering these potential increases and the potential reduction of that one hour. At the end of the day, this is a well-esteemed event that the city enjoys, and we hope to continue to offer it for the years to come. At the end of the day, I kindly, humbly ask this esteemed group, we can't make this a success without your support. So if you have any connections in the community, whether they're in Lakeside, where they're in El Cajon, San Diego proper, even Temecula Valley wineries. We want their business. We want them to come here and indulge in this event. So please, I encourage you, I empower you to try and go out there and get some more vendors for us. I will go with you to these esteemed places, and I will pitch it for them if you would like. I will be there with you. I'm more than happy to join you on this trip. But we just need more vendors. Um, Lovely spreadsheet. Uh, I think the spreadsheet noted 75 vendors in 2019, and we're down to 47. Guys, let's bring this back up. I believe in this group. I believe in you, Ryan. Okay. Okay. Well, with thank that, you. I uh, second the motion on the floor. Okay. We will second the motion. This, this motion is to remind everyone to uh, provide the $3,500 uh, funding to the community services group. So let's uh, call for a vote. We have a first That's and me. second. Okay. Uh, Anita Batista. Do you... Oh. So you want to abstain? We're voting on whether to We're give We're voting them on the 3500 for special events um, to pay for their iPads. I guess I'll have to get one. Okay. Dan Bickford? Yes. Cindy Carlton? Yes. Michelle Dressler? Yes. Ken Fox? Yes. Ryan McCarthy? Yes. Linda Miracall? Yes. Kathleen Pishney? Yes. <clears throat> Stephanie Price? Yes. Dr. Alan Tuthill? Yes. Dean Velasco? That would be a yes. Great. Motion passes unanimously. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Next, let's talk about staff report and park development updates. Nick, take Thank it over. You. Thank you, Mr. Chair. All right. Margie, would you do me the kindness of putting up that map? Thank you so much. So um, I want to let the body know, and this esteemed group, that council did approve on January 25th some improvements on Walker Trail's lodgepole fencing. As you can see, there are some areas that need repair in regards to the fire that took place in 2021. With that said, um, council did approve the contract, and um, we're looking to hopefully secure that contractor for some potential dates up in the uh, I believe in the upcoming few weeks. So once I get some confirmation on those dates, I'll let this body know when those improvements are taking place. So as you can see on the blue areas, this is where the improvements are going to be taking place. To also include some improvements on the crossing bridge near the latter parts of the trail. So I just want to make sure that this body is aware of the things that are taking place and all the advancements we're doing here in the community. With that said, um, council did also approve on January 25th the um, maintenance of 605 trees at Mass Park. So that's going to be a big project that we haven't done in a while. I believe the last time the trees were touched may have been in 2015 or maybe perhaps a little later than that. Uh, I believe we do may have records in regards to some of those maintenance, but uh, at the end of the day, um, the place is a phenomenal park. There's a lot of enjoyment that takes place there, um, and some of the trees do definitely need a little bit of tender love and care. So with that said, that's also being scheduled, so um, I'll make sure to let this body know when that tree maintenance work is being conducted. With that said, um, there is a volunteer opportunity that's coming up that the River Park Foundation is hosting. It's taking place on February 18th. It's Saturday. It's a community cleanup, and it's going to be taking place at Forester Creek. So if you know of any students 
that are looking for credit for graduation or if you just want to be a kind citizen of this lovely city and want to help to beautify our community, please feel free to see me after this so I can provide you more information. So we nailed down some times for that date. Um, other than that, we have identified that there are a few park kiosks in um, our trail system to also include our parks that need a little bit more tender love and care. So with that said, I'm going to be working with our staff to make sure that we um, improve some of those kiosks in our community. I believe um, it's uh, safe to say that some of them probably just need a plexiglass uh, refurbishment to also include maybe replacing um, perhaps a few wood pegs or so, but uh, some of them do need a little bit of maintenance. So that's something that's taking place in the foreseeable future. Also, um, I'm wrapping up. Um, as this body is aware, there is a little bit of some vandalism that took place at Town Center Community Park East. Unfortunately, um, this is a, a, a big sorrow concept because PSD works so hard on um, you know providing such a diligent field for our AYSO my NFL lacrosse communities to play in those fields. And someone unfortunately decided to um, take an off-road vehicle and provide some harm, um, very unnecessary harm to our fields. So um, I'm happy to say that we're providing some refurbishments to those fields. They are um, available for use now, but we're heavily encouraging uh, community members to potentially stay away from those areas that are still um, in refurbishment so they could hopefully be a good top quality tier for our special event series that are coming up pretty pretty soon. With that said, I wanted to close um, by just mentioning um, an exciting project that we're trying to work with in regards to uh, Mission Trails. Um, near Big Rock Park, there is a trail that Mission Trails runs. It's a collaborative between the county and the city of San Diego. Um, it's a popular trail, to say the least. A lot of bikers utilize that trail. And uh, we're trying to talk with Mission Trails to potentially try to propose some improvements, um, some things that we would like to potentially see and partner with the city and the county on, on potentially putting a kiosk there, perhaps a bathroom, uh, a drinking station, more parking. Because at the end of the day, we want to be good partners with the city and the county, and we want to make sure our residents you know, have a good experience when they go to Big Rock. Because at the end of the day, um, what we're seeing is that you know we love people out in trails. That's that, that's our bread and butter. But sometimes potentially some of those parking spots are being taken up, and our pickleballers can't play pickleball. Or you know little Bobby and Timmy can't go to the playground because all these parking spots are taken by the trail goers. So um, we're trying to mitigate this. We're trying to work with the county and the city, and we're going to be proposing some concepts to them relatively soon. So I'll be keeping this group appraised on what moves forward and regarding that project. Other than that, that concludes my items. Thank you so much. Let me know if you have any questions. Thank you, sir. Yep. Any questions? No? Oh, hey, Ann. So I have members of my team here with me, so I'm going to bring Becky back out to give the special events report. Oh, you, she's going to sit where I sit. All right. Hello, everybody. So... Um, at the front entry table, we have two flyers for our events coming in February. We have a Love Your Heart event, which is a partnership with the County of San Diego's Health and Human Services Department. Countywide, it is um, awareness of heart health and overall health, um, health and wellness. So we are participating by providing pr free blood pressure screenings on Wednesday, February 15th from 9 a.m. until 4 p.m. Located here in Santee City Hall, room 8A. Um, no appointments are necessary. Come on in. We have some firefighters who would be providing free blood pressure screenings and some additional uh, county support um, pamphlets and information items on how to maintain a healthy heart and healthy lifestyle. So we hope to see you there. And also, we are celebrating in February our 7th annual Fido Fest, which will be on Saturday, February 25th in Town Center Community Park from 11 a.m. until 3 p.m. It's going to be a doggone good time. Sorry, I had to do it. Um, we hope to see. We have <laughs> multiple uh, dog rescues and adoption um, agencies coming. Um, and we also have dog vendors. We have microchipping, dog licensing happening on site. We'll have demonstrations from the sheriff's department, from the fire, the fire department as well. We're going to be providing demonstrations with flyball. We'll have off-leash areas. It's going to be a great time. Food, um, food will be on site as well. So we hope to see you there. And that concludes my special event report.
Oh, uh, correct. So there is an annual calendar located in the front. If you haven't picked it up, please grab one and please pass it on to your friends and family. Thank you. Thank you much. Oh, yeah. We're going to play a video. Hope to see you there. It's awesome. always a good time. Thank you, Ann. Now, Sam. Nope. Me too. Oh, still. you're still? Yeah. I have somebody else hiding in the back. Oh, um, it wasn't on my script. Uh, I'm sorry. Let's drum roll, please, for Matt Foster, our new recreation coordinator. <laughs> Woohoo! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> So he started with us this month, or last month, actually, January. Um, Matt is the recreation coordinator who will be overseeing senior activities, instructional programs and classes, and camps. He comes to us from the military as a civilian, where I originally came from. So did Becky. Um, and he, we, we're really glad he's on board, and I'm fully staffed. So yeah. I'm just thrilled. <laughs> Thank, and we're training him to do IT stuff for meetings, so, yeah. you know, you come, we train you. Um, thanks, Matt. Thank you. Um, also wanted to give you a heads up on recreation classes. They're ongoing, our spring, and our summer day camp registration actually starts March 6th, so you'll be seeing some um, additional marketing for that. Our teen center is always busy. Like I said, they got a new foosball table. Not foosball, I lied, air hockey. Um, and we're still partnering with the library as well as SD Knights to provide activities for our, for our teens. Our seniors also partner with the library. They had a speaker um, just recently, and then also they will be going on an out and about to Off-Broadway to see a play on February 5th. Upcoming on February 23rd, they are also going down to the Downtown Central Library on a tour. Um, wanted to let you know, as mentioned, that all of our parks and fields are very busy right now. We're getting busy and or we are starting with spring sports um, seasons for baseball and softball. And Weston Park is now picking up with a lot of picnic shelter rentals because of the new playground. So, any questions? Any questions? No. Thank you, Ann. Sam, any reports? Okay, thank you, Sam. Let's go to... Uh, I like any, his report the best. Yeah. <laughs> any uh, committee reports or general <laughs> announcements or handouts? <laughs> I want to, oh. I'm sorry. Yes, Mr. Michelle. I, I looked the wrong way first. So it's been about a month since I told the pickleball people about the group that I joined. Um, but I think only five girls have showed up so far. So um, <laughs> any sort of outreach to millennials and Gen Z. Um, it seems like unless you do literally everything for them, even like pick them up from their house and take them to the place. You don't it, doesn't, say. it doesn't really matter how much information you provide because huh. they will not take the initiative to actually get up and leave their house. I've, I've heard that before of the, the millennials. Um, I'm sorry, someone down here had something to say? No? Oh, yes, Miss Kathleen? I wanted to pass along, Cindy Carlton and I were at um, a couple of the senior events, and uh, one lady in particular was extremely appreciated, appreciative of what um, Spark does to support the senior events, and she just wanted to make sure that you all knew how much they really, really appreciate it. Well, great. Thank you for coming with that feedback. It's always <laughs> nice to know that uh, what we're doing up here and what the city's doing is appreciated by, by all. Uh, Dan, what you got? 
All right, so I will once again bore you with all the gory details of the Kiwanis Club and uh, the exciting uh, events that we have coming up. So in March, March 25th, we're going to have a, rena a renaissance experience in the uh, lot outside of the YMCA. Uh, plans are going very well with that, and uh, so it looks like it's going to be a, a well-attended event. Um, and then, uh, then not to be outdone, the very next month we have the Junior Olympics, where we, uh, <clears throat> we bring the uh, fourth through, I'm sorry, the sixth through eighth graders out to uh, Santana, and we run them in uh, athletic events uh, for fun and prizes and bragging rights. Um, and then, uh, and that's going to be April 29th uh, at Santana. And then uh, May 20th, and we're bringing, the, we're bringing back the uh, Special Olympics to Santee. Uh, West Hills High School, again, May 20th. Uh, volunteer opportunities for all of these events. Uh, come one, come all. Uh, we have a, uh, if you go to the uh, Santee Kiwanis uh, website, uh, santeekiwanis.org, uh, you'll find links in there to uh, that where you can sign up for uh, for uh, volunteers. We're using a new volunteer software uh, tracking program. Uh, it, 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 it's it's great. It's going to save us a lot of time and effort in our, especially when we when we're doing uh, uh, the Special Olympics because we'll have 700 participants there, and so we're going to need just about as many volunteers as we have participants. So it's going to be a huge event, and uh, so tracking that is, you know, with, with the software is going to help us out tremendously. So you can, you know, you'll find links in there to go ahead and get, uh, uh, get over to the software. You can sign up. You'll be, a, you'll be uh, notified by email um, when opportunities are, are available, um, but you can sign up for the event that you are interested in right now. That's what I've got. Excellent. Thank you, Dan. Anyone else? Any announcements? I, um, yes, Miss Linda. I do have an announcement on uh, actually the barn on February 18th is having their medieval day. So anyone that likes Renaissance or people dressing around uh, jaunting with each other, it, is, it was fabulous last year. I did miss it, but I will be attending this year. So it is at the Santee Historical Barn on Magnolia, February 18th, and I believe it starts at 10, but they keep changing. So What's the date on that again? February 18th at the Historical 10 Barn. 10.30. Is it 10.30? Yeah. At 10.30. Okay. Thank you very much. And, and we're going to be uh, combining forces next year. We're talking, we're talking right now, why, why are we doing two different ones and... And uh, so we're, we're going to um, bring this historical society in and, and uh, or combine forces and see how, how we can do it for next year and whether, you know, what, what, what month is better. They decided on February. We decided on March. <laughs> cool. Excellent. I just want to make one quick uh, thing. Oh. Mast Park, um, I know that a lot of you have seen it since the redo. Uh, with that rain we got, it... it became very, very cool. We had a lot um, uh, of water, standing water, in the areas that are designed to stand and filter it through before it goes back out to the, uh, the San Diego River. So next time we get big rain, because it doesn't happen that often. Last year we definitely didn't have that, but uh, if you get a chance to walk through Mast Park right after a big rain or uh, check it out the next day before it all sucks into the earth, it's pretty cool. So it just makes the park look super, super cool. I got a lot of pictures on, on our big rainstorm. So... All right, anyone else have anything else? Let's move on to number eight, non-agenda public comment. We have none. Future agenda items. Uh, yes, Ms. Linda. I believe back in sev um, September of last year, I brought up Field of Dreams, and I'd like to have that put on the future agenda for Finita Ranch. Also, with those parks that are going in on that development, I would like to see another pickleball park designated just for that. 
along with the Field of Dreams for Disabled, and a um, possibly putting a skate park that is not antiquated up there because that whole development is geared for a healthy lifestyle. And I believe there was 36 parks that will be donated back to the city of Santee once the project is placed. And I'd like to, I have talked to Jeff O'Connor regarding Field of Dreams. And so they're not opposed to it. And actually he seemed quite fascinated to have something just geared for the disabled family. And a lot of families now have a child or grandchild that is disabled. And in Santee, I know that it was brought up that there's a couple things at this park and a couple things at that park, but there's no park designated to having strictly a disability park. So um, I would like to see that on the agenda this year for Phil the Dreams. And that's it. Thank you very much. Um, uh, let's discuss that a little bit. Do we get to dick or do you do you have meetings with the developers on what they build for parks? Because I know on the West End we didn't. Uh, I I don't know what happened on the West End where we had to go and redo their park right after they built it. But um, do they bring you into to any planning meetings? Since you know you're the director of all of our stuff. I mean, are, do they? Yeah, it just, it just depends on the um, on the development and what it is, and if we decide to condition trails or parks. So we we could certainly talk to our engineering uh, division or our planning division and see if they could potentially come to a foreseeable f near future meeting and potentially talk about the potential hypothetical spread that that may incur. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. To put that park in, I already told Jeff O'Connor it's going to be well, it was three point one million. And he didn't seem to bat an eye over that, so I was pretty happy with that. Because it's pretty basic. You're not using really a big um, plot. It doesn't have to be this huge park, but it's going to be totally geared for the handicap. And the cost to put that park in was at 3.1. Okay. That project, it, from to my knowledge, is not 100% uh, going just yet. So I think when we get a little further along... Yeah. That uh, <clears throat> it's there. It's gone it, the last twenty years. It's been going around. But when it gets a little bit more real, I think we could definitely, you know, have talks. Sure. Cool. Excellent. Uh, with that, our next meeting is March fifth, and I would like to adjourn this meeting. Thank you all for coming. Have a good night. <laughs>